Following on from what we introduced um, when we were looking at Google Analytics, I want to give you a quick tour of another free tool that Google provides for people who own websites or make websites. It's called Webmaster Tools. And you can access it through your Google account. So wherever you are within any Google app, Gmail or Analytics, you click My Account, you'll come to here and you should see Webmaster Tools. If not, you can click Edit and get it to show you. So I'm just going to go in quickly and give you a bit of a, a tour. So before you can view the information and, and tools within Webmaster Tools, you have to add your site first. The way you do that is click Add a Site. You give it the name of the site. Save the pixel door. And there's four different ways that it'll do it. You can link it to your analytics account, which is pretty good. And if you've got the analytics code already set up, then it'll all work. So that should actually, okay. But uh, another way is to add a meta, type, meta tag to the site's homepage. So here's the meta tag that it wants. And I can just paste that into my HTML code for, um, for Save the Pixel, upload it, and then click Verify Now. And it will check the things there, and then it will believe that I actually own that site or control that site. So a few different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you quickly around Webmaster Tools within Web Design from Scratch. So you go in, and it's uh, talking about your most important keywords, and um, which are like keywords on the site. That's from what it what it queries. Um, so when Google crawls your site, it's saying this site seems to be very much about design and tag and Ben and and, and reference. Okay. Um, this is also interesting. Search queries. This is telling me, you know, who's um, what what my most common search search terms are. But it's kind of aggregating them as well. So I've got things like logos. Now, logos isn't a big search term within web design from scratch, but what this is saying is there's lots of phrases that mention logos, and I've come up in, the site's come up for 4,400 times, roughly, in the last month, with terms including the word logos, and it's generated 22 clicks. So I'll go more into that. So this is over the last month how many times pages on my site have been featured in Google searches. I've got a couple of peaks there, which is interesting. I don't really know why that might be. Obviously, we're very popular with Google that day for some reason. And um, so here it's saying here are my top search terms. Again, they're not specific phrases. They're just the most common terms that come up the most. So we've got lots of things that include Web 2.0. And it's been returned 49,500 times in searches. And it's generated 1,300 clicks. Now, there's a few that have generated that number of clicks, but look at this one. Best designed websites. It's turned up 3,600 3, times in searches and has generated 1,900 clicks, which is more than 50%. There's 53% there. So if I look at the terms that generated the most clicks in the last month, there we've got best designed websites is number one. Even though it doesn't come up that often, it's coming in average position 2.5. Remember, this isn't just for that term. This is for phrases that include best designed and websites. Web 2.0 come up a lot, but average position nine. So there's a lot of, it's not just Web 2.0 design or just, it'll be like Web 2.0 and other variations of Web 2.0. So, you know, coming up quite usually on the first page there, but it's only getting a click through rate of 3%, which might tell you something about what happens. So let's, Let's do a Google search for Web 2.0. Okay, so I'm coming up number two for that. And then you see the content that Google's showing here. Now this is important, this is, this is part of the user experience. What people see in the search engine results is part of their experience and it's gonna be part of what influences them to visit the site or to visit somebody else's site. So it's worth checking. And this is saying to learn how to design Web 2.0 sites yourself, you must read Save, Save the Pixel. Okay, now it would be better if it was saying, you know, this page will tell you how to design Web 2.0 sites yourself. So maybe, you know, that might be something I might go and look at. Let's go back to Webmaster Tools. And what else is, what else is on the rise? So look at the changing clicks. 
Okay, so there's a lot of things that have just come in. Anchor tag. Yeah, top 10 design websites. So had a 200% increase in, click, in clicks in the last month. Top 10 best websites. Top 10 websites. And this is because I've had a page, it's, it got really popular, and then I created another page called my top 10 websites for 2010. So this is all very interesting. And it's, it's great just to have a, have a bit of a play. Let's see what's the highest climbers of the week. So up 100 places is Nike logo, which happens to be mentioned on a, a, uh, a page I did about logos. Best website designer is up 30. That's pretty cool. So you can see how much your pages fluctuate. Web page layout design, web, web design. You know, that might be just just simply that a word has been included on a new page or a page has been changed in some way and uh, you know, the page can bounce bounce up and down the rankings quite a lot. But you see mostly the changes are at one or two places which is quite common. That's the majority. There's quite a few that have a 100% click-through rate as well. Things like div style block. we do a search for that. If you, if you look at the results here, number one, CSS block and CSS inline elements. That's the one on my site. That's very clear. We've got NC Design Style Sheet Guide and then capitals. CSS Basics 106B. See, this is just not quite as simple or as appealing as the number one tag there. The, the number one link that I've got. So that's why it's getting, it's getting a click pretty much every time it gets shown. Apart from being at number one, which should give it a you know, the 40% head start is obviously performing very well. JavaScript Hello World Alert, 36 impressions roughly. They, these are all kind of rounded. Um, and 36 clicks, which is great. So, you know, getting getting a lot of interesting clicks. Now, you know, what you do with this, there, there's all kinds of things that you could that you could read out of this data. Let's carry on with a little bit of a, another quick tour around the site. So that's my search queries. Links to your site is telling you which other sites on the web link to you the most. Okay, so it's got top 1,000 domains that link to pages on your site. Forecast Advisor is a site that I designed several years ago, and that's actually got 72,000 different pages on it. All of them have got a backlink to web design from scratch. Now, if I was going to be really clever, what I would do is I would say to the guy who owns Forecast Advisor, please can we put in a little bit of code into your page that it's good, that will vary the the text within the link on each different page. So I might have 30 different combinations and it'll just show one of those at random, which will help mix up and give Google a better variety of, of link text in those links. Scratch Web Design Forums, we've got 59,000 links already on there. Don't know what F4SI is, or Mr. Wong, I think, is a designer's site. So, you know, it's very interesting. That Guru Shot, it's only been live a short time. It's got 22,000 backlinks already. And Televations, that's a client site. So, really, really fascinating how many sites with how many pages link back to you. Now, obviously, having 72,000 links from Forecast Advisor is good, but it's nowhere near as good as having 72,000 different websites that all link to you. You know, if you were Google and you found one site with that many links to another site, you wouldn't score them as 72,000's worth. It might be, you know, 700's worth. Who knows? But it's good to see the kind of range and variety of people that link to you. It will also tell you what pages they link to. I mean, Forecast Advisor, it says here, only links to one page, which is the home page. Scratch Web Design Forums links to a few different ones. So it's got you know, a few, but uh, mostly pointing to the home page. So again, because I own the forum, I could mix up that link text as well and, uh, and maybe vary the pages that they link to. It's better to have, instead of 59,000 links all to the same page, I could have 1,000 links to 59 different pages, which would help boost all of those pages. Because quite frankly, 
webdesignfromscratch.com homepage doesn't need 59,000 links all from the same place because the value of those links goes down over time. So that's the links to your site. Let's look at keywords as well. So remember, keywords isn't what people are searching for. This is what are the words that Google thinks you know, crop up most commonly, most frequently on your site. So put design, tag, tags, tags, tagged, and tag. My name comes up a lot, obviously, reference designer table. Okay, fairly interesting. But what this is saying is this is what Google thinks your site is about completely site-wide so looking at these you know we, where's the word web web isn't on here that's interesting but CSS is on there newsletter text graphic so you can get this is this gives you a kind of flavor of, of how Google's starting to think internal links is just tells you how many links there are to different pages so how you can easily boost your website success is the most linked to page of 228. That's because I've got an advert on every single page, sometimes more than one, the points of that page. That's the one that promotes um, Save the Pixel. Pro Web Design Course also is on nearly every page. Um, subscriber stats we won't really bother with. But, um, I've got my RSS feed submitted as a sitemap. Okay, now diagnostics is interesting. I'm going to jump to crawl errors. So this is when Google is spidering your site, when they're crawling your site, it's, fi it's finding this many missing links. So I've got six different pages, either on this site or on the web, that link to this PDF file that no longer exists. Seven pages that link to slash accessibility, which apparently isn't there. So it's really, it'd be really good to, to go through this to help. So Google is then helping you spot broken links within your site. Could also be that, um, that they're links from other people's sites. So this is the production one. Okay. So page not found. So production of PHP, who's linking to it? Okay. So there's three internal links apparently. Um, and then somebody from outside is doing a, a link as well. So, you know, if I had plenty of time, I would try and go through and tidy all these up. So one thing that you, you can do is if you see people, if you see that there are several links coming through to a page that isn't there, you might want to create a page and just put it there or put in a redirect to bounce people to somewhere else. I'll have a quick look at crawl stats. Okay, so that's just saying how, how busy the Google bot has been on the website. Now this is important, HTML suggestions. This is Google's, basically Google's way of telling you how you can make your website more Google friendly, which you should definitely do. So what it's telling me here is I've got two pages that have got duplicate meta descriptions. So the meta description is the same on this page and on that page. So I might want to fix that. Because Google's telling me it doesn't really like it. I've got a few pages with short meta descriptions. It's saying you, you could afford to make these longer. Missing title tags, none. That's good. Duplicate title tags, two. So what have we got? Okay. Now these are, I think, generated by WordPress. So they're just kind of automatic menus of links within a category. Click on an actual category. I don't even know how you get to that. So I'm not too worried about that. But definitely make sure that you follow the HTML suggestions in Webmaster Tools. We had a client recently who came to us and said, um, this is a site we designed about three years ago that we don't manage. And they said, our site has suddenly disappeared from Google. What can have happened? And uh, I checked on Google, and sure enough, it was, wasn't in the top 100 results, even for the site's domain name, which means that it's suddenly been dropped. Now, it might reappear next week. You just never know, because you don't know what's going on within Google. Um, however, you know, all I could say is make sure that you try and comply with the Webmaster guidelines for, for your website. 
It may be that they've just fallen foul of some rule, or Google has changed the way that it um, that it thinks about certain techniques. You know, so that's why sites go up and down all the time because they're always trying out different things and changing things. So, good idea to go on here and let Google help you make your website Google friendly. So that's a quick tour around Webmaster Tools. I definitely advise that if you've got any websites up there, you install Webmaster Tools and have a play. You'll need to leave it for a little while to, to get any useful stats through. But um, it's all good fun, and uh, I hope, hope you, you have a go and find it interesting.